residential area. Building shakers, yes. Building shakers. Can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. Huh. And I just love your flashy ways. Uh, this is why the broken you're so big. Biggie, biggie, biggie. Can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. Huh. And I just love your flashy ways. Uh, this is why the broken you're so big. Biggie, biggie, biggie. Can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. Huh. And I just love your flashy ways. Uh, this is why the broken you're so big. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. Huh. And I just love your flashy ways. I guess that's why the broken you're so big. Build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it. Huh. Aw, yeah. Build it, shoot it, yeah. Let me out. Build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, What's going on? Microphone check. One, two, one, two. It's your boy DJ Shane. The Building Shakers, we are here. Today is Monday, May 3rd, 2021. How is everybody doing? Hope everybody is good. Uh, before I jump in, before I dive in, uh, I just want to give uh, some words of encouragement and I want to send some words of healing to the OG down at the Shallow Riders, OG Wiz. I know your son Turtle had a, a bad motorcycle accident, so... I would ask that the creator reach down and put his healing hands on your son. Uh, Hotep to the family. All, all the family has uh, been going to see him down at the hospital. Uh, he's going he's gonna to be all right. He's going to pull through. I'm going to ask the creator to put his healing hands on your son. And he's going to pull through. He's going to get back to square one. So that's what I want to start off the show saying. Uh... Mike T on the check-in. Cuzzo, Kiwan, Brooklyn in the house. What it is. Um, before I jump in, funny, funny conversation this this uh, this morning, actually. One of my military buddies. One of my military buddies. My man, Dunn Guns. My man, Dunn. Donnie. Uh, one of my military buddies that I met uh, back in 1997. And we were chopping it up for about a good, about a good hour and a half, almost two hours, uh, two hours, uh, repping, reminiscing about the good times and uh, just how we have evolved as individuals, as men. You know what I mean? Because we were in our twenties back then, in ninety, in the nineties, ninety seven, particularly, and we have evolved. We were talking about the the women we've dated, you know, the interactions that we had with women back then, blah blah blah. So it bought me, it spawned, it spawned the idea, you know, after talking to my good buddy. And I thought about the movie, How to Be a Player. And I actually went, this is funny, I actually went to the movie theaters when that movie actually came out. This was 97. I went to the movie theater to go see that movie. Funny. But, you know, coming now to the, to the current day and age where we have the, the movie uh, Perfect Match with uh, actor uh, Terrence J. So I was like, holy shit. These two movies are similar and compared to the main character, which was played by uh, Bill Bellamy in uh, How to Be a Player. His character was uh, Dre. And uh, in the perfect match, the main character played by Terrence J. His uh, main character was uh, Char- Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack. 
So these two, I wanted to compare these two main characters and ultimately what what did they learn if they learned anything, right? So let's start with Bill Bellamy's character, Dre, and uh, how to be a player. So pretty much Dre, he's a pretty boy working at the record label Def Jam, got all these girls of blah, 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 but he has a girlfriend. He has a girlfriend, but he has multiple girls believing that they are also his girlfriend as well. And that's why I wanted to use the two, wanted to use the two movies to, to make the, the, the compa- uh, comparison, contrast and comparison. So Dre pretty much, as we can give it the newer term, uh, perpetrating the fraud, having all these women out here thinking they're the one, they're the main chick, the main squeeze out, outside of the main character that played, that was played by his, uh, his girlfriend, uh, was her name? Lark, uh, Lark Voorhees, the actress. She was the main, main, main chick, but you know, he had several chicks on his rotation. <laughs> so pretty much his sister and his sister's friend were doing a social experiment and they were trying to see if you put a player in a hostile environment will he crack and fold under pressure right seems fair but little did they know you know that's just the way the story was written you put a player in a hostile situation he won't reform he won't crack or fold under pressure he'll rise to the occasion improving his game thus adapt keyword adapt so i'm not defending his character <laughs> I'm not, I'm not defending his character, but I, I want to make a point. That's why I brought in the other movie, Perfect Match. When it comes to dating, and they gave a, he gave a, ge- a geographical uh, animal kingdom comparison. He said, if giraffes once had short necks like horses, how did they get long necks now? And he said, uh, the young lady was like, well, you know, being that the foliage was so high up in the tree, they adapted to their environment. So it's like, yeah, in comparison to dating, when you're dealing with, with men and women, and I'm trying to bring it, bring it back to the surface level, we have to adapt to each other's patterns, human behavior patterns. We have, we have to adapt. Hey, what's up, Gina? Jitu, jitu, G unit. What up, what up? What's up, Jessica Medina on the check-in? Uh, Jacqueline, what's up on the check-in? What's up, baby? How y'all doing? Hope y'all are having a good day. We, we have to adapt to each other. Now, granted, the person that you are willing to adapt for, is that person suitable to make changes? Healthy, healthy changes as far as a relationship is concerned is that is that person worth adapting for and herein lies where we say choice it depends on the choices that you're making and who you are choosing to adapt for and we can play we can play that game of you know uh we both have preferences men and women have uh relationships and aesthetic preferences uh you know women say today oh i want a guy that's six feet tall and make six figures and da 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 and a guy he wants the pretty girl with the big butt and yada 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 semantics that's just the aesthetics but what are they bringing to the table as far as their social skills that would make you want to adapt and have them as a partner so now we're going to jump to the movie perfect match with actor terrence J. his character is charlie mack now, Charlie Mack is a very well-established uh, talent scout for this agency. And he's a photographer, too. So, he pretty much, he's living that player life. 
he doesn't want to be in any committed relationships because the last committed relationship that he was in it fell by the wayside so he don't want to do relationships any woman that he comes across he makes it known right out the rip hey i don't i don't want a relationship i'm here to have a good time as long as you respect my shit i respect your shit right cool fair now i wonder if a woman that meets a man like this character in the movie that Terrence J played and granted he has his shit together meaning he has a house he had a beautiful house car all the material bullshit but pretty much in a man's world that's how men show off we they show off with their accomplishments right cool but he had the house all of that he was just missing one thing a wife didn't have a wife but pretty much everything else as far as what a woman is looking for he had checked off i don't think terrence j is six feet i actually met him in real life in dc he's about 5 10 so teetering around the what women want as far as height wise um terrence j he's a He's a handsome guy. You know what I mean? I think most women would agree. Uh, shout out Strictly Stagging on the check. What's up, baby? Uh, shout out to StrictlyHipHop.com. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a handsome guy. And for the character that he was playing, it, it played well into his character and just who he brought out uh, on screen as far as his interactions between all the other women who were just, you know, fly by night. Now, my thing is, he fell for... Cassie's character but I wanna I, I wanna I would I wanna be real specific and I wanna slice this up some Cassie's character came to this scenario not being truthful and not being honest Terrence J character Charlie Mack he was very honest and said, hey, you know, I'm not looking for nothing. I, I don't believe in long-term relationships. I believe in short-term. I'm here for a good time. As long as you respect me, I respect you. And she said, well, I've never done short-term relationships. I've always been in long-term relationships. But I think I want to try something new. Now, I'm going to ask the fellas a question. Yo, Rich, my man Brooklyn Rich on the on the check. Hey, what's up, baby? Brooklyn in the house. Um, I want to ask the fellas a question. I mean, we all seen the movie, you already know what happened. But put yourself in Charlie Mack's position upon meeting uh Cassie's uh character. If a woman told you that she doesn't believe in short-term relationships she's never tried it she's always been a fan of long-term committed relationships but she said she's willing to try i think she said you know i think i want to try something new fellas how would you respond right then and there would you say hmm this chick might be the one this chick might be worth me adapting for and changing up the game or we can say in layman's terms maturing and growing up because at the end of the day I believe the majority of us we want wives us men we want wives and the women they want husbands so I think he was like you know what let's try this let's try it out but lo and behold, as the movie progressed, we learned that Cassie's character was engaged this whole time. She was engaged. And she started getting cold feet. So she wanted to see, or she wanted to test the waters just to see if she thought that she was cut out to be a wife 
So, just like coming to America, you know, soiling your royal oats. She wanted to soil her royal oats. Not saying it's right. Not saying it's wrong. But that's how the story was told and that's how the movie was shot. I'm going to deal with I'm going to deal with it in reality. I know if a woman presented to me that scenario of how Cassie's character was played and and written I probably would have reacted the same way like Terrence J did I would have been devastated because she lied to me she lied and uh, I guess the twist part of that movie is she still went on and got married blah 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 And he pretty much had to deal with his internal demons, which was the passing of his parents. And he he didn't know what it was like to actually give love because the only love, I guess, you know, unconditional love that he knew was from his parents and his older sister played by actress uh, Paula Patton. So, you know, it, it, it was devastating to him. It hurt. It hurt like hell because... He was honest. He was vulnerable. He felt like he was vulnerable. He's like, well, damn. And I, I, I felt, I felt that pain in that character role because, like I said, uh, I did the podcast the other day when I went through my little breakup uh, back in 1997 <laughs> when I was in the Air Force, uh, going going into 1998, and dealing with what I dealt with, and I almost felt like that character was the same that was me in real time I told the young lady hey listen I know we're both young we're both attractive we pretty much have the pick of the litter as far as the dating pool and this is 1998 and I said listen I'm gonna be real with you what do you want to do do you just want to date and have options or do you want to be in a monogamous relationship she said monogamous relationship so I took it for what it was worth I took her word for it and one thing I will say is in comparison to uh, Terrence J's character Charlie Mack I was true to my word I stayed faithful and monogamous And it's almost ironic that it blew up in his face and it didn't work. It didn't work out like how he thought it was. So the point being is, and I'm bringing uh, Bill Bellamy's character back back into this because he's not he's not out of the hot seat yet. I'm I'm frying his character for a second. (laughs) Uh, His character was a player, true player. And he had a girlfriend. So he was deceiving all of these young women into thinking that, you know, they were the one or blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, he had a woman basically wife ready. She came over, did his laundry, cleaning up his house. If that's a wife, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? Putting up and washing your stinky drawers and your funky socks and made him breakfast. (laughs) So, hey, that to me, that hey, that's a wife. You know what I mean? That's hands down. But the point is, honesty. And are you willing to adapt to the person that you want to date? And herein lies where I say there's a small issue in 2021 as far as the caliber of men and women that are out here and collectively what we bring to the table as far as adults, human beings. And you know, the popular rhetoric out there is that, stop me if I'm wrong, fellas. Oh, there ain't no good men out here. There ain't no good men out here. All you dudes is broke. Yada, 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 y'all having all these babies. Yada, yada, yada. You don't take care of your kids. All right. Then the, the flip side. Oh, most of you dudes are gay or in jail. Yada, 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 yada. Right? 
that's the rhetoric that is being pushed among popular circles of women and I can't say the same for men I don't think there are groups of men at least I don't think so talking about us as a species now as a gender oh we ain't shit we're out here fucking up da 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 yeah, we can address the problem and we know the issues, we can run the numbers, but I'll only speak to my melanated kings for a second, because I'm speaking to us as a group, only only us. The numbers say otherwise. The numbers say otherwise. So, regardless of the small anecdotal conversations that we hear and they can be subjective and objective depending on who's speaking and who's giving the, 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 the talking points but as a collective there are more black men out here today in 2021 that are doing the right thing trust and believe there's a, there's a lot of men black men in 2021 that are doing the right thing and I'm going to jot down uh, a topic that I thought about uh, this uh, this morning actually actually last night and it is going to go something like is being attractive being good looking and attractive and being a good person is that enough for the dating market that we're in today, currently, dealing with modern men and dealing with modern women. It's being attractive, handsome, and just being a good person. Is that enough to get the type of outcome that you want when searching for a mate? I have my numbers. I got my talking points. I just have to write everything down. And that will be the next topic for the rabbit hole because it, it it definitely slices up us as individuals but it also makes you look in the mirror and you have to be held accountable for your actions every hey my right on the check what's up stuff uh you have to be held accountable for your actions and I have a back and forth dialogue with a lot of people, men and women, particularly women, because I love the ladies, regardless of uh, the banter that I get from, you know, a few chosen few, they think that you're bad, they love to throw this, this catchphrase out, oh, you're out here bashing women. You hate women. You're a misogynist. You're a chauvinistic. You're a chauvinist. Really? Really? I beg to differ. Not only did I do a part two of one of my rabbit hole topics the other day when I was talking about uh, modern women. Are modern women fit to be wives? And I had my mother off camera, but we were just having uh, a dialogue. And I was just simply asking her some random questions about what did she think about the kind and caliber of woman of today, meaning modern, modern women. Because, you know, my mom is not a part of this modern women wave or this breed of woman. My mom is from the caliber and cloth of women of yesteryear. And it's crazy because those women, meaning my mom, my grandma, my great-grandma, great-great-grandma, all of those women, when it was their time, they were all wives before they went into the ground. They were wives. And they had to deal with 
10 times worse of societal pressure what was going on at those times and I'm, I always reference my two decades 1950 and 1960 very crucial and pivotal time for black people so they had to deal with a lot back then just being being black and being in America being a man or a woman but particularly being a woman back then and they were wives and they grew up fast because they had a family to take care of they were mature they were grown up they knew how to take care of the home and keep peace in the home they adapt they adapted and that's the point I'm trying to make I don't know what it is you can call it selfishness I don't even call it self-preservation because at the end of the day we need each other as men and women we, we need each other that is the sole purpose of us being on the earth to procreate and leave behind a legacy and that part I think gets overshadowed overlooked or even the point gets missed because we live in the real world we're in the digital era science and technology has moved you know this society forward and we live by the almighty dollar you know what I mean cash rules everything around me so if you are not part of this social dynamic that is considered the norm where you have a man you have a woman they have pretty much decent jobs making making average money but together as a unit they can hold that family structure together and by the numbers a child has is more likely to be a productive member of society coming out of a two parent home and that's probably something I'm probably going to discuss maybe next week I got to I got to jot down some notes and bring up some talking points like I said I I have I have a dialogue with a pretty much diverse crowd I speak to everybody black white Latina, it doesn't matter. I, I speak to I speak to everybody, men and women, but particularly women, because I just want to know. Well, I know I know where we went wrong as a society. I know where we went wrong, but now I like to have this dialogue with different people and hear a little bit about their upbringing and how did they evolve to the person that they are today? Because you know you had to have a starting point midway and ending point so it's like all right well how how do we arrive here how, how do we get here so that that's basically why i took these two movies and particularly the two characters of uh dre and charlie mack two play two player players and compare and contrast the, the characters and, and what they bought on screen and at the end of the day it's a learning it's a learning lesson and my talking point for today is adapting pretty much that's it adapting are we willing to adapt to the person that you want as far as dating are you willing are you willing to adapt and that's pretty much it you know are you willing to adapt with the person that is bringing everything to the table that you would seem fit to make a relationship work and the end goal is marriage and I think that's a fair that's a fair assessment to make and it works both ways it's a two-way street it's not biased you know what I mean so this one's this one's was short this one's definitely short and on the check and up this one was short sweet to the point that's why I wanted to use the two the two movies Uh, to compare and contrast uh, the characters. Uh, Stay tuned. Like I said, shout out to my bro, FP Idle Hands. If you didn't subscribe to his channel on YouTube, his uh, YouTube channel is called My Life, My Truth. Make sure you go on YouTube, 
and just type in my life my truth you'll see the the logo the, i think it's a green logo fp fp idle hands and you'll see all of the videos that's there real life real people real stories uh i'm on there i did uh shot about six episodes uh, part one is already out right now and actually once I get off this live I'll actually share the link again uh, for the first part part two will be coming out June 22nd of this year 2021 stay tuned for part two where I'll be talking more about the birth of my DJ career and you know still kicking to this day and my, you know my DJ career started in 1992 uh, dope time, I can tell you, good, good times, man, good time. I got, I got a whole bunch of musical stories to, t- to tell you guys. Um, you know, well, actually, hold, on. I could, I could tell you one, one, one story. Uh, shout out to the bro Shaheen. Shout out to the whole Wu Tang. Heard they had a, a video shoot last night at a secret location. Shout out to the building shakers, Nephi Neff, last American B boy. I, I see you out there working, brother. Uh, funny story. This is, uh, I want to say, 1991, maybe. Maybe 1990. When I was a little short tyke. This is pre-Wu-Tang, pre-everything. Shaheem and Rubber Bands. Shout out to Rubber Bands. Used to come in front of Port Richmond. Him and that uh, Rubber Bands used to have this big-ass boom box. But Shaheen used to come in front of uh, Port Richmond and battle anybody that knew how to rhyme. He was just like, oh, I want I want to battle. Like, who, who who raps over here? Like, let's get a cypher going. He wanted to battle. Rubber bands had the boom box with the, with the instrumentals and blah, blah, blah. And he would just battle people in front of Port Richmond High School. Cla- classic hip-hop moment right there. And this is my pre-introduction before I started DJing. Dope, dope story. So shout, uh, shout out to the bro, uh, Shaheen. You know what I mean? He's doing his thing. I heard he's back in the studio cooking up some stuff. So shout, uh, shout out to him. Uh, yeah, so like I said about the podcast, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. The channel's called My Life, My True. Shout out to FP Idle Hands. Um, I will be remixing this and shooting it with a better camera. Better lighting, better sound, and all that good stuff. But I have an arsenal of material ready to ready to come out, ready to be shot. But I want to make sure the meat and potatoes of these episodes that I have, I want to make sure it's shot the right way. So you can just say I'm giving you guys a teaspoon. I'm giving you guys a teaspoon and what's yet to come. It's coming. I just have to put it together. Shout out to my brother FP Idle Hands. We're going to... We're going to sit down and we're going to iron out all the wrinkles and we're going to make sure it's being presented in a professional way, being shot, HD, all of that good stuff. So that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, Like I said before, New York City curfew will be lifted. Everybody got your fingers crossed. New York City, the curfew will be lifted uh, the end of this month, May 31st. So everybody stay tuned for that. Uh, we're still in the midst of this pandemic and hopefully it will flatten out. We'll hit the curve. We'll flatten out the curve. We'll have this thing called herd immunity and we can get back to somewhat normality and all of these businesses that were, you know, vastly affected by this pandemic. Hopefully we can turn everything around and and get back to where we need to get back to. So, um, each and every Friday, you know where to catch your boy. You know where I'm going to be at. 772 Richmond Terrace. Shake the zone of Terrace. Shout out to everybody that shows up. All the regulars of blah, blah, blah. I appreciate you guys. You guys have been beautiful patrons this whole time. Dealing with the scarcity of people, you know, due to the pandemic. But y'all been rocking out with us. And I definitely appreciate everybody for showing up and having a good time. I I provide a service. We're a DJ. I I enjoy everybody having a good time on a Friday night. That's that's my get back for putting in all this hard work all these years and having to see a crowd full of people just enjoying themselves on a Friday night. No 
drama, no beef, no nothing. The, the vibe is always cool. The energy is always cool. So from me to you, I appreciate I appreciate everybody that that shows up. You know what I'm saying? So in the meantime, we're gonna keep it kicking. We're gonna keep it pushing. Stay tuned for uh, future episodes of the Rabbit Hole. Uh, they're coming down the pipeline. You know what I mean? Stay tuned for that. And also, I will be putting something together. Like I said, I was speaking to one of my military buddies. And I'm going to reach out to all my military buddies that was cool with me in the Air Force. And we're going to do a Zoom call with all of us. And it's going to be a recorded a recorded session. And that should, that should be pretty cool. That, that's going to be fun. You guys are going to crack up about these classic stories about us when we were in our 20s no one believes these stories because you're seeing the more mature the more grown up refined version of us but in our 20s listen we were some loose cannons <laughs> to, to say the least we were some loose cannons back in the uh, late 90s in the air force shout out to barksdale air force base and every everybody that came through from uh 96 to 2000 all, all my peoples all my military buddies brothers and sisters and arms Love y'all to death, man. We we cool. We still cool to this day. That's y'all are lifelong friends, man. I love all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So this your boy DJ Shane. You can check us out each and every Friday. Y'all know where to find me, God willing. And uh, also one one more uh, announcement. Shout out to Rodney. Shout out to Tone. Shout out to Muff. Shout out to Mo. Uh, BK Lobster, the black owned franchise. They will be having a grand opening this weekend in uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. And that is 732 Washington Street. That's 732 Washington Street in Hoboken, New Jersey. This weekend, Friday and Saturday, they're going to be opening up uh, their restaurant called BK Lobster. Best lobster rolls in town. Go there. And just let your taste buds run wild. So shout out to the whole BK Lobster staff. I uh, heard they just had a, a grand opening last weekend, uh, this past weekend in Park Slopes. Uh, shout out to Ed. Shout out to you, brother. Uh, proud of you. Congratulations. As always, peace and blessings. Giving everybody you, you guys his flowers while you're still here. I'm proud of you guys. Keep going. It's nothing like black owned businesses. And I, I got nothing but love and support. For any black owned business that's thriving, we're making money the legal way, we're not hurting anybody, and we're pulling in people that have the same vision like we do. We, we want to see us win. I want to see everybody win. So if you are out here and you're doing a damn thizzle, I will salute you. I will give you your flowers while you are here. And also, uh, quick sidebar, Side, uh, shout out to DJ A-Star. I see you, young brother. I see you got the MTA. You down with the MTA crew. Welcome. Welcome to the union life. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you, brother. Uh, I'm proud of you, nephew. You know what I'm saying? You, you're doing a goddamn thizzle. So I like to give I like to give people their flowers and, and, and end my, my live stream always on good energy. Like I said, it's your boy DJ Shane. Building Shakers. Shout out to the crew. DJ Big Blitz. DJ Relioso. Diverse the First. Last American B-Boy. Courtney. Miss Rel. Slim. YOLO, Audrey Green Eyes, and congratulations, Mama, on your little bundle of joy, little wand. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure once everything clears and people can come visit, hey, I got some I got some toys and stuff, you know, I'm going to bring over there and stuff for the baby. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations, Mama. It's your boy, DJ Shane, and I'm going to take you out with our theme music. This is our theme music. It's your boy, DJ Shane. Finish. Peace and love. Played at high volume. Preferably. Preferably. In, in a, a residential, residential area. Building shakers, yes. Tell me how. Building shakers. Shout out to the Heights. Washington Heights. Que lo que, que lo que. All my Dominicans. 165th Broadway. Hey. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. And I just love your flashy ways. Guess that's why they broke me up so big. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. And I just love your flashy ways. Guess that's why they broke me up so big. The wave is approaching. Guess that's why they broke me up so big. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me. And I just love your flashy ways. Guess that's why they broke me up so big.
The wave is approaching. Shout out YOLO. <laughs> 